Yo, what up? It's Curtis J. Schultz here, coming to you from Editing and Visual Effects class. About to hit you up with a little tutorial that hopefully you'll be able to learn and advance upon a little bit on your own. So let's check it out. First off, this is what we are going to try to emulate there. Alright, so now that you've seen my finished product, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can build this. Uh, number one, you might notice that your default composition background is black, so I'm going to go ahead and go up here and change it to white. Uh, I'm mainly doing that because all the layers I was dealing with was black, and so I'm simply going to change it just for ease. Alright, now the layers that I built in Photoshop is this one single leaf layer, as you will see, there it is. And then also this little vine layer that I'm going to throw in there. And I had some extra schmutz on the top, so I'm going to kind of get that out of the frame. So I'm going to frame it up like that. Uh, mainly I just wanted to show this vine kind of building up and with the little leaves springing off just like you saw before. So let's focus on one thing at a time. Number one, I'm going to move my leaves accordingly, or my leaf accordingly, as to where I might see it on stemming from my uh, branch. Okay, So I'm going to put one right there. I'm going to duplicate the leaf. And if you want to duplicate a layer, you can simply highlight the layer and either go up to Edit, Duplicate, or hit Apple D as it says there. I'm going to bring maybe another one right down, Mia. And I'm going to duplicate it again and bring one maybe right over here. Now I'm going to flip flop this one. So I'm going to go to my scale and I'm simply going to click on this, uh, unclick on my chain link there. And I'm going to make it a negative value in my first one. And you'll see, boo bam there it goes. It just flips right on the other side. Whoops, didn't want to move that one. Wanted to move this one. Okay, so there's my leaves that are kind of going to be going off my branch there. Now, the main thing that I'm going to first point out is that we want to, just a little fine tuning here, is we want to, uh, I might make this leaf the largest of them. So I'm going to bring up my scale properties, maybe scale that one a little bit bigger. Okay. And then I'm going to make this one a little medium size, and I'm going to make this one smaller. But the main thing I want to point out first is before I start going crazy with my scaling, because then I'll have to continuously readjust, is I want to change my anchor point with my pan behind tool over here. I'm going to change my anchor point for each one of these leaf layers by simply moving them and putting them as close to the stem as possible. I'm going to do that for each little leaf layer. And what you'll notice now especially with this layer, I'll show you an example, is that when I scale it up and down, I'm going to put my chain link back on down there, you'll notice when I scale, it looks like it's scaling more from the tree, whereas in, uh, you know, before I did that change, you'll notice that it scales more for the center, not really scaling so much from the vine there. So that's why I wanted to change all these anchor points, so it's pretty much coming from my vine, so it looks like it's growing from the vine. Uh, that way, when I make some fine adjustments here in the scale, I won't have to go and reposition my leaf flair. Okay, so that looks like what I want my end product to be. Now it's all a matter of building it, which is the whole thing of After Effects, right? So let's first go in into making my, uh, and, and organization is always the key, so let's go ahead and label this one leaf one. Put this guy at the bottom. Which one's this one? This one's leaf three. I'm gonna put that one at the top leaf three and leaf two. Uh, you can relabel your layers, which I probably should have told you before I did that. You can relabel your layers simply by hitting the enter key and then go ahead and typing away and relabeling them. Okay, so first I'm going to focus on my vine uh, growing up and up into across my screen. I'm going to do this with my pen tool. So I'm simply going to click on my pen tool and I'm going to start a little bit off screen. I might have to zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna click Mia, and I'm gonna follow my uh, my vine there down. Now since my vine is a little curved, I'm gonna go ahead and follow that. I can simply follow my curving by uh, clicking and dragging on my pointer uh, as I make that pen point, okay? So click and drag as we make that point. And I'm not gonna make it perfect, but I can go in and fine tune it. So let me see if I go in here and fine tune it. I'll zoom on in here. Maybe uh, use my hand tool. See, that one was a little messed up. So I might tweak that one just a little bit. And let's see how my other ones were. All right. So now that I have my vine all in tune there, I am now going to go up to Effect. And I'm going to go down to Generate. And I will go to Stroke. Bam. 
So I click in the stroke and what you might notice immediately is that it's a white brush color with a brush size of 2. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually increase my brush size so it actually fills up my whole vine layer. Just like that. Now we don't see it anymore. But the thing I'm going to change now so we can see it is on original image right here, I'm going to change from paint style to on original image to reveal original image. And what you'll notice is, bam, it just appears again. Now the cool part here is now I can use these key frames to animate my start and end point. Okay, so if I did it from my start point, it would start from the top and go down, which is exactly what I want because I want to go in reverse and go like that. Instead of whereas I could do the end, it would go like that, which is not what I want. Okay, so I'm going to start with a keyframe. I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to adjust my start point all the way down to the bottom so it's at 100%. Click on my stopwatch. I'll move forward to, uh, we'll go about one second, and I will now increase, or I'm sorry, decrease that start point down to zero. Now yours might be slightly different depending on where you started your pen path, but either way, just adjust your starter endpoints, and you'll notice where you want it to come from. All right, so let's take a look at that. Awesome. There's my vine growing on up. But now, I want to be able to have my leaves grow as my vine is growing. So let's take a look at my keyframes. So obviously I don't want my vines to start until uh, my vine, I'm sorry, I don't want my leaves to start until my vine has passed it. So I might have my first leaf start to pop up right about there, okay? So I'm gonna click on my leaf one layer and I'm gonna go to my scale. I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight all these if you haven't already and hit S for scale so that way we can see all our scale properties because that's the main thing I'm gonna be dealing with, okay? So I'm gonna hit my stopwatch for scale. I'm going to start it out at zero because I wanted to start at zero and I remember right now it's 76 is its endpoint. So I'm gonna hit zero, bam, now it's gone. I'm gonna move forward, uh, we'll go five frames. So I'm gonna hit Apple right arrow button, one, two, three, four, five, and I will now have that grow up to be, I know I said it was originally 76, but I'm gonna have it do this little pop effect. So I'm probably gonna go to 82 and then I'm going to go forward another three frames by hitting Apple right arrow again. One, two, three. And I'm going to have it pop on back down to 76. Okay? So this is the effect you're going to look at. Okay? Did you see that kind of little pop effect? See what I'm saying? So now we're going to do that the same exact thing for the other layers really fast. So uh, same process here. I'm going to click on the layer. And I'm going to wait for that vine to pass it right about there. I'm going to click on that layer. I'm going to make my scale go down to zero. Okay. I'm going to go four or five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Increase that on up. And I might have to unlink these because I want it to be on negative 100, 100. Okay. I actually want it to be on negative, let's say 110. and then 110. Okay, so it goes a little bit bigger. Three frames again, and then back on down to negative 100, and 100. All right, and last but not least, my last layer. I'm going to start right about here, and I'm gonna click on that layer. I'm going to hit my scale, which is at 111. So I'm going to go down to zero. One, two, three, four, five. Make it go up to 120. One, two, three. Back down to 111. And just like that, shrink my work area. Whoops, not 11. 111. Just like that, we are now done. So I'm going to hit zero. Let's check out a quick RAM preview. And there it is. So we can check it out in full screen mode by going to my tilde key right below the escape key. I click in that window and hit tilde. There it is in full screen mode. Sorry about that. And let's check it out again. Awesome stuff. So now you're going to check out something that I made a little while back. Uh, shows the same effect but on a little bit larger of a scale. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, it's just a, a whole big tree kind of doing the same exact thing of what I just taught you guys kind of on a larger scale. So hopefully you can see a little bit of the scope of what you can do with this effect. And here's one last thing I want you to take a look at 
to be careful about is this vine right here. Whenever you have things intersecting like that, it might take a little fine tweaking. As you can see, it kind of gives you a T that doesn't look exactly good. This might take a little fine tuning of masking out that area and then revealing it. So the only thing I want to say is be wary of vines like this that intersect each other. Other than that, that's about it. I'm now going to show you a podcast too, which is going to take the same exact thing and actually show you what we can do a little bit with text.